Hey everybody, I'm Dr. Morales. I'm here at the Heart Rhythm Society Conference and I'm here with Dr. Akash Makar, who is an electrophysiologist in the Phoenix area. Dr. Makar, thank you for being here and taking a few minutes of your time. And so today we're going to talk about a little bit more about what happens when an ablation doesn't work. You know, there are patients out there that can get very frustrated, you know, they hear that ablations don't work or maybe they had a one that, that didn't work. And so how do you approach that with your patients? You know, let's say, let's start off with you meet a patient that had an ablation someplace else and it didn't work. So mm -hmm. how do you start with that counseling? Well, with the them? thing is, um, I think patient education is a big part of it. So when I approach a patient, if I'm seeing patient for the first time, mm -hmm. I do tell them that it's not possible that 100% ablations do work. Mm -hmm. A lot of factors, how big, weak is their heart, how big is their left top chamber, mm -hmm. how long that AFib for, were they cardioverted before and maintained the rhythm versus they've been in AFib for 10 plus years, also how leaky the valve is. And so I do give them a realistic approach and what's possible and then obviously we do the investigation basically an echocardiogram that tells us that um, based on what how big their all these characteristics which I mentioned are that is going to work on what is the chance and I do prepare them that especially the persistent AFib patients now the paroxysmal AFib patient in which AFib comes and goes they're better amenable to treatment as you know but the persistent ones, I tell them that it's a possibility, it may not work. And then obviously at that point, we decide whether it's worth going for a second redo procedure. And the recurrence is more AFib or an atypical flutter, because atypical flutters are more amenable mm -hmm. to catheter mm -hmm. treatment than AFib. Mm -hmm. And obviously there is a very small subset of patients uh, in which we you know your AFib been there for 20 plus years, no attempt has been made to convert into sinus rhythm, the left ch chamber is severely dilated, the valve is really leaky, you know those things, ablation is not going to work no matter what technique you use. And for those sub-select patients, we plan on doing, um, you know, AV node ablation with the pacemaker placement, and obviously we proceed with those patients if they're not a long-term uh, anticoagulation candidate, the problem with blood thinners, we can consider watchmen or appendage occlusion for those patients. When it comes to, back to ablations, you know, sometimes people ask, like, is there a certain number that's too many? You know, if you say, oh, if somebody has two, you can't have any more after after that. You know, so, so I tell people, we don't, now nowadays we all talk about catheter ablation more than surgical ablation. Mm -hmm. Now I understand if it's, if it's a cardiac surgery, you open, open chest and whatnot, you can do one or two maybe surgeries. Mm -hmm. Catheter ablation is like angiogram. They do angiogram, they have 10 stents at 10 angiograms. It's very similar to that. There's some scar in the groin, but it actually, there is no limit to how many ablations you can do. I've, in select patients, if they have had more recurrences with um, AFib, and I know they're a good subset, they don't have much other medical conditions there. The chamber is reasonably sized and whatnot, and I know that I have a good chance of fixing. I've done up to four ablations in those mm -hmm. patients. Mm -hmm. Now, you touched upon surgical ablation. So how does somebody know if a surgical ablation is better for them versus a catheter ablation? Okay, we go back old times when we didn't have all these tools. Mm -hmm. People were bad with AFib, and at that point, they were going for open-heart surgery for something like this. In today's world, people can say whatever, but I think surgical ablation, ablation is too invasive mm -hmm. compared to catheter ablation the results are not better mm -hmm. look at any study they actually just did EKGs that follow up rather than doing the event monitoring mm -hmm. or loop recorder monitoring which we do mm -hmm. so if you look at the data we have much more rigorous data with catheter ablation mm -hmm. now only patients only patients I recommend surgical ablations if they're going for heart surgery anyways mm -hmm. they're going for a bypass they're gonna have their chest yeah. open anyways mm -hmm. at that point so the chest is open, the surgeon can cut the appendage or ligate the appendage and do a maze procedure at the same time. If they're going for a mitral valve surgery because the valve is so leaky, 100% they should consider uh, surgical ablation because they're going for it anyways. No point in doing a catheter ablation and then send for mitral valve surgery. That is the only subset which I think works for surgical ablation, not de novo the patient is going for a surgical ablation per se. Well, as, as you know, surgical ablations are advertised a lot to patients. They try to tell patients this is the, the way to go, it has better success rate, but they don't really always talk about it's a, not necessarily better, but it's also a significant more procedure, much longer recovery time. Yeah, it's it's like a heart surgery. I understand they sometimes they say they can do mini thoracotomy, like a mini chest incision surgery. 
look at that. You're talking about no scar, pretty much there's no incision for mm -hmm. catheter ablation. We just have IV lines and we do through it. But in surgical ablation, it's 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 a heart surgery. Yeah. And there's too much morbidity associated with it. Mm -hmm. And look at the data. Where is the long-term data? Mm -hmm. We have yeah. way more robust data yeah. with catheter ablation yeah. compared to that. So why would we do it? And in addition to other points, that many times people who have AFib have a lot of other health conditions as That's well. Right. They might be more older in age, but if, have if other they have medical chronic kidney disease, as well. If they have chronic kidney disease, there's a good chance that they will go into this heart and lung bypass and they will end up on dialysis after the surgery. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, I totally am against it. Well, Dr. Uh, Carr, thank you for taking a few minutes of your time. Really appreciate giving you our, our, your insights on managing AFib. Okay? Thank Take you. Care. Take care.